Hello and welcome to January at the Scientific American Blog Network. I'm Karen Bondar and you know, this month was kind of a wacky one for the network. We are going all over the place from extreme weather events to extreme viral behavior to the evolutionary psychology behind the booming industry that is monster pornography. I'm going to throw it right over to John Horgan to explain that one first. Monster porn. This is uh, written primarily by women for women and it involves fantasies of women having sex, often at least initially non-consensual sex, with uh, Bigfoot, with uh, Godzilla, T-Rex, um, giant robotic aliens. I mean every possible crazy entity that you can imagine. The angle I came up with was that uh, not just the human mind in general, but uh, especially the female mind and the female libido are completely mysterious. Um, I mean, because who could possibly predict something as crazy as uh, monster porn. This month on her blog, The Artful Amoeba, Jennifer Fraser gives us a story about a virus that has managed to successfully invade an animal host from a plant host. This is mind-boggling. Tobacco ring spot virus normally causes trouble in plants like soybean, raspberry, and of course tobacco. So it came as a shock when scientists discovered the virus had apparently invaded honeybees. Honeybees and plants are separated by about 1.6 billion years of evolution, so a host leap of that magnitude is a mind-boggling event. The virus may have been aided by a high mutation rate, and also by the fact it can be a sexually transmitted disease of plants, which means it can get around via the sperm packets we call pollen. Since bees regularly wallow in the stuff, and eat it with gusto, the virus clearly had the motive and opportunity. When scientists discovered the virus comfortably ensconced inside bees' wings, antennae, nerves, and blood, it became clear that, no matter how improbable, the virus clearly had the means as well. We are all very aware of the crazy cold weather that has been going on in a lot of places in North America this month. Mark Fischetti is here to explain what this polar vortex is and exactly why such cold temperatures and such extreme storm events are happening. We keep hearing about this polar vortex every time the temperatures drop, like it's some mystical beast that comes down from the North Pole and grips us into a deep freeze. So what is this thing anyway? Well, my blog has the details, but you can think about it like this. The polar vortex is a prevailing wind pattern that circles the Arctic, flowing from west to east all around the entire planet. Normally, it does stay far north and locks the cold air up towards the North Pole, but occasionally the vortex weakens and it allows that cold air to drift down through Canada into the U.S. The vortex, when it does that, can also push the jet stream much further south and keep it there so we do stay in the cold for days on end. So what causes the vortex to weaken then in the first place? Well you have to read the blog for the details but here's a hint. It has to do with the loss of Arctic sea ice in the summertime. Well, there you have it. Just a small sampling of some of the highlights from January at the Scientific American Blog Network. Make sure you check back to all of your favorite blogs. You know, weekly, there are so many cool stories coming your way. I get to highlight just a few of them, and I will be back to do just that again in February.